Let's now bring in defense and security expert, Dr. Kabir Adamu. Dr. Adamu, thank you for joining us on this night. Thank you. Good evening. Now, it's becoming more worrisome by the day, the events in uh, ah, this part of Africa where, I mean, it's one coup too many. Uh, speak to us about our involvement as a nation and then as a bloc, ECOWAS. Uh, at this time when Nigeria is uh, going through economic quagmire, and then we want to intervene. Uh, what about the cost, uh, the financial cost to us as a nation? How are we going to cope? Well, um, this, these are some of the issues that I think will be addressed um, at the meeting. It's a three-day meeting um, of defense chiefs and they will definitely table um, several things. They will table their competencies, their capabilities, um, the consequences of their actions, how, who is going to pay for what, who is going to contribute, uh, both um, military, human, and other capabilities. And I think at the end of the three days, they will submit their strategy to the, um, the head of, heads of state. And it's the heads of state that will now take the decision at what point in time um, this strategy will be implemented. Um, yes, uh, the ECOWAS region as, as a block is severely challenged, um, both in terms of the economic circumstances that it's going through, as well as other um, co consequences. I mean, since the w Russian invasion of Ukraine, we've seen the rise in commodity prices, rise in energy uh, prices, and several other consequences. And then, of course, before then, it was the it was COVID, and so most of the countries in the region have these challenges to con contend with. And sadly, uh, four out of the fifteen member states uh, already have military dictatorship, um, you know, in 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 in, 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 in uh, as their governments. And so that makes it extremely difficult for the uh, bloc to take decisions as 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 one. And just like we've seen in the meeting today, as explained by our correspondent, four of these countries were not. Um, you know, in attendance and the possibility that um, the 11 that were in attendance may not even have the strength, the capability to go ahead with that decision is extremely high. But let's not forget that there are international partners that are, have supported the decision. Just today, the UK announced support. Before then, the UN, the US and several other international partners, the EU too as a bloc, has supported that. Gaps that I've mentioned, including finances and capability, may be shouldered by these international partners. Uh, Dr. Adamu, do you see any sort of uh, change or shift in the posture of ECOWAS as this defense chiefs are meeting? Because at the at the meeting, uh, they say, "Look, yes, we're." Uh, looking at uh, possibility of military intervention, but it will be as a last resort. This is not what we heard from that meeting uh, that the ECOWAS leaders had with President Tinubu. It was as if they sort of just dived in uh, head first, like, if you don't do this in seven days, we're going to have military intervention. But at this first day of the meeting, they're now saying, look, that is tabled for as a last resort. And they've had criticisms, uh, a lot of criticisms about this military intervention. Do you anticipate some sort of shift from the position of ECOWAS? Um, not necessarily. Uh, if the heads of state issue a directive and that communique uh, listed several things and the last thing that came was uh, this possibility of a military intervention. Now, um, as defense chiefs, once their heads of state issue a directive, um, none of them can say no to it. They, they can point out the consequences, they can point out um, you know, the what if, but for them to not to comply with directives by the head of state is, is just not an option in military parlance. And so um, the, that option remains on the table. It is a possibility. However, the reality, and this is me speaking as a strategist, nobody, uh, would encourage a military intervention. There are certain principles in international relations, especially the principle of non-intervention in member states. That principle is paramount. It's, it is what binds international re re relations. And so all countries are conscious of that. And the junta is already playing that card. It is uh, using sentiment. It's highlighting the fact that these are internal 
matters. And so any military intervention would be seen from that regard, except for instance, if the, the other diplomatic measures are taken. And just today, we know that a, com a convoy um, led by the former president, um, General Abdul Salam, was, uh, is in Niger, together with um, the Sultan of Sokoto and several other members of that delegation. Now, these are well-respected individuals. And so there is an olive branch that has been um, sent out, as it were, to the, the junta in Niger. And we're hoping that they do, you know, take hold of that olive branch and, avo and avoid a military intervention in the region. What I think we all agree, and I'm hoping that everyone listening agrees to that, is that democratic governance that, that allows peace and stability um, should return to Niger as quickly as possible. This may be the beginning of uh, a truncated ECOWAS because it's, it's beginning to look like a new alliance is forming with Russia. But is Nigeria prepared at all to lead the, a process leading to a truncated ECOWAS? Um, already, uh, the African continent, sadly, is in the middle of ge the geopolitics of the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Um, it, after the Russian in invasion, the divide between NATO and um, EU and the US, and then, of course, Russia and, you know, quote and unquote, some of its allies, um, what we saw is that, you know, each of the side caught in African countries. And it's that reality that is hitting us. Um, uh, Guinea, Mali, and Burkina Faso all have, to a larger extent, Russian influence, either directly or through Wagner, um, you know, the mercenary group. And so when they speak, they're actually speaking most times as on behalf of, of Russia or, or Wagner, the case may be. And so even Niger, when Niger reaches out to Mali, Guinea, and Burkina Faso, what we're seeing is an extension of that ge geopolitics. And sadly, that's the reality of um, the today's world. And I think it's high time we in Africa realize that. It's, it's quite sad that um, when a country like Niger leaves um, France, as it were, it's going into the hands of Russia. And the same exploitation that is, has happened under France would also happen under Russia. And so I think it's high time we wake up, invest in human capital, invest in capabilities so that we're able to mine and process these resources that are behind this geopolitics that we're seeing. Let's not kid ourselves, it's about resources. Definitely. And beyond the support and solidarity that Niger, the Niger uh, coup leaders are getting from Mali, uh, Burkina Faso, Guinea, you're also seeing support from the masses. They say they've been dealing with uh, a, a decline in confidence in uh, legitimacy of elections and other issues in the country. And so they're saying, look, we're in support of this uh, military coup. What's the impact of this support when you look at the efforts that, uh, or how would this impacts the efforts of ECOWAS trying to uh, open up diplomacy talks? Um, as a strategist, uh, earlier on I spoke about uh, this um, principle of non-intervention in um, you know, internal affairs of member states. Um, now, anytime uh, there is support around any government, um, that principle, of course, is, is strengthened. Um, in other times where that support is weak, then it allows for foreign uh, elements to capitalize on and then play a hand. But I think it's absolutely important that we emphasize that that support is not necessarily a support for the military junta. It is rather a rejection of the reality that Nigerians have found themselves where over time they believe they have um, natural resources, uranium and petroleum, gold, and several other things. And yet they are living in abject poverty. There is no index that you pick that Niger does not come at the bottom in, in terms of dep deprivation. And so that's the reality that most Nigerians are translating into what you are seeing, uh, asking themselves over this almost 60 something years, uh, of post-colonial France and the, the type of relationship that France have had with, with, with their country, their, their government. Why is it that that is not translating in progress for them? They are still not able to add, afford health um, services. They are not able to feed and, and what, what not. And so that what you saw is more a, 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 a reflection of that than a support for the coup. And the reality is that over the coming days, 
as the effect of the economic sanction that ECOWAS has put on Niger bites harder. Already we're seeing um, electricity cuts because, of course, um, el electricity is supplied to Niger from Nigeria, a significant portion of it. And since Nigeria stopped that, there, there is, it has impacted Niger. Um, we're seeing runs on, on banks. Um, the banks in Niger are not no longer able to you know, issue out cash and all of that. So as the effect bites harder, that support is going to win. Most Nigerians are going to wake up and say, who cost us this? It's the coupist. And so they are going to start um, revolting. And so that would also allow other possibilities because we are likely to see a split. What we don't want to see is the repetition of what is happening in Sudan, where you know the, the military will be divided into two and a coup and, and, and a civil war or something like that will, will start. But um, point I'm trying to make is there are other pressure points and those pressure points are going to bite harder on the Nigerian people. And one of the simplest ways the Nigerian people would react is to show le less support for whoever caused that for them. And in this instance, it's the coupist. Brother Amu, defense and security expert, we must say thank you to you for coming to news night tonight. Uh, let's just hope that this pans out uh, positively in the coming days and weeks.